good morning. Today is the 8th of October and here we are back at Barron's Classic Car Auctions at Martford near Southampton. I do apologise for the background noise and the wind noise, so we've got boat construction going on and all sorts of other things um, at the moment. But here we are for our monthly visits. I do apologise in advance for any incorrect information. If I fall over, if um, I get interrupted by things, it's just the way that it goes on this channel. First lot is something quite interesting. Um, it's a 2002 Subaru Forester Sport. It's done about 128,000 miles. One owner from New, apparently, which is uh, remarkable. Subarus do have a very loyal fan base. This is, um, I think, the second generation car. This could be wrong. It could be a very late first generation one. I'm not very familiar with these Foresters. Um, this is a uh, five speed manual. The body work does need a little bit of attention. You can kind of see it just there. Um, it has got a motivo until 2025. The estimate on this is only one to two thousand pounds. I didn't realise these cars were no budget reviews money. Apparently, they are. Um, because here is one. I, I was uh, going to have a look inside, but it's locked. Some of the cars outside are locked, so it's unfortunate. But there we go. We've got like a dog guard and things in here. Just a sort of cloth interior. Um, I don't think these sport ones were a turbo or anything. Well, there we go. We can see there. Yeah, so there we go, that's interesting. Go straight on to the next slot, which this is uh, this um, late W124 Mercedes. It's just the E200. This was the base model at the time in 1994. Um, the registration number, I think, has been recently changed. To see if it's open, I don't think it is. No. Probably uh, with this, it's before the current system of naming came in, so there weren't really trim levels at the time, unlike the contemporary W202 C-Class. So it's just an E200, it's an automatic one. Be a bit slow. Um, probably uh, with about 100, I think 134 horsepower these have. But yeah, two to three thousand pounds. Um, let's have a look at the mileage on here. See if it actually says it, sometimes they don't. Um, 32 Mercedes-Benz services. Last. Um, service was at 120,000 miles. So there we go, which is in January 2024. Fantastic. Um, don't miss this opportunity to buy a unique and unrepeatable maintained vehicle. There we are. So I gather something's been taken out for a test drive, so we will um, just queue out of the way of that and continue. Lot number 103, a 2005 BMW 320i Cabriolet. I do believe we have seen this before. This is a very, very late E46. I think they made until 2006 a Cabriolet version. Estimate is two and a half, three and a half thousand pounds. It's not really my sort of specification. We prefer this car in dark blue or dark green with a beige leather interior and wood, but um, you know, this'll do. Looks very clean. 103,000 miles. Yeah, definitely like sensible secondhand classic sort of car, this. Um, I prefer maybe the, I don't know, the Touring perhaps, I've driven a Touring quite recently and that was really nice actually, very nice chassis balance on these cars. Right, next one. So um, next one is a 1981 Triumph TR7, Northern Irish plate, it's be quite a late one production at Solihull finished in um, 81. So it's been off the road for a few years, apparently it needs some recommissioning, uh, I've got the sort of tartan interior on this one. The estimate on this is only seventeen fifty two and a half thousand pounds. So it's not it's not you know the best example I've seen. Solid hell built car of course by the boot lock. But um, yeah, I mean if you want a little project over the winter, it needs tidying up. You can see bits of bodywork like this that need addressing. Um, interior looks looks all right actually. There's you could leave the seats like that if you wanted to. Pop that ashtray back in. That's not bad. Um, I have driven one of these. It was a coupe. Um, the rear rim was a little bit squiffy on it, so perhaps that's just that car or something like that. But uh, yeah, should be fun for somebody. And our old friend, the 1935 Standard 12. Estimate on this five and a half, six and a half thousand pounds. Older restoration on this car. Yeah, I mean. Um, it's not really my kind of 
thing, this. Um, traffic out of the course. I'm just very fond of this sort of interior. It just reminds me so much of the 1930s and sort of, um, I don't know, watching those sort of Agatha Christie adaptations of things where this would be used as a background car. Just the way it's sort of made. I will close that door properly in a second. And things like this <laughs> crazy sort of um, fuel filling act just coming out of there. I just hope that somebody does actually want to buy this um, because I think it's really nice. It's just I wouldn't want to sort of try to maintain something like this. It might be a bit difficult. And also, I'm not sure it would have the best brakes or the best gearbox in the world. Next, we've got something completely different. There's a lot of the 107, a 2001 Porsche 911 Carrera 4. The estimate on this is only 11 to 13,000 pounds. I thought these were worth a lot more than that. I drove a Carrera 2 version of it, a 2000 of a Tiptronic gearbox in 2022. And that was, I think it was said it was worth the time like 11 grand. It was a less desirable model than this. Um, this is a manual. It's a facelift one. And it's got parking sensors. You probably need those. Rear wiper is intact. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks good. I wonder if we can get inside this one. It's quite open the door very far. There we go, six-speed manual. Yeah, I mean, I'm not massively into Porsche. I know some of you are. Um, I don't really know an awful lot about them, but the one I drove was good fun. That would be even more fun, actually. And you get the security of four-wheel drive traction. Uh, viewers, I feel a bit sad about this still being here. Um, my friend uh, Max from Discount Emmy Road Rover Spares, um, this is one of his cars, and I did borrow this car briefly back in July to take it to um, the BMC Leyland show at the Gaiden. You can see there's the Discount Energy Rover Spares logo there. I don't know why this car isn't sold. It's not like kind of, you know, there's too much wrong with it anymore. A lot of the issues that I mentioned in the review that I did back in July have been fixed now. So I, I don't really know. Um, and maybe you can sort of answer me about it, but maybe they just aren't worth a lot of money. Um, Estimate on this is one to two thousand. You know, if you want to see more about this, then you can um, you can watch the video that I, that I made. Yeah, um, overall it's actually it's actually pretty good for a cheap little car like this. He's done a lot of work to it. But uh, yeah, there we go. Oh well, viewers. Um, I mean, there's quite a few XJSs here. That one's I think having some restoration at the moment. Uh, but um, yeah, look at this. A 1989 XJS V12 convertible manual with Lister upgrades. I don't think I've ever seen a Lister um, modified XJS before. Not one like this anyway. We've got different mirrors, it's a wide body. Um, yeah, V12 manual, different steering wheel. Crazy. I only ever driven one XJS in my life. Um, it was also a V12 convertible. It was a 91, so right at the end of when they badged the car's XJ hyphen S. This hasn't even got an XJS logo on it at all. Got a list of some there. Um, estimate this is 20, 25,000 pounds. I mean, it's, it's very, very 1980s. Absolutely typical. This color, um, these flared arches that you get towards the back and the wheels and everything. Yeah, I mean, it'd make a good car for someone. I, I prefer Mark's chest is a bit more subtle than this, but um, some of you might like that. Let's have a here a, a bit more affordable. Three to five thousand pounds, a 2004 BMW Z4 2.5 SE automatic. I think this is probably locked. Ooh, red leather interior, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is an early one then. I don't know if those lights have been changed. I thought the lights were different on the preface of one, so I might be wrong. But yeah, it looks, it looks good. Um, within the fact the grill is original to the fact it's an SE. Um, let's have a look and see if the mind is recorded. Sometimes it isn't, sometimes it is. Uh, no, it's not recorded. Sorry, no, sorry, it is. 76,000, okay. I don't know much about these, to be honest. I know the base engine was a two litre, I and mean, you could get things like the uh, um, bigger six cylinder sort of. Three litres possibly above that. 
Um, but that does look like quite a fun. They've got quite affordable cars at the moment, these. Excellent. Our old friend, the 79 minivan that started life as a club bum but has had a, a round front end put on it. Estimate this time seven and a half to eight and a half thousand pounds. Um, I don't know why none of you have sort of bought this. But Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel, who is uh, an expert on the classic minis, he has sort of said it's not a bad price for one of these. Um, so, what is it still doing here? Only you can tell me that, viewers. Only you can. Got that wonderful odd sort of um, <laughs> um, Austin Rover logo or Austin Morris logo as it was back in the day. Um, yeah, not much else to say really. I haven't said. Hopefully, somebody will buy it. And another old friend. They've got quite a few cars in this particular sale the autumn sale, the October sale. Um, and one of them is, yeah, this Ford Falcon Sprint Convertible, seven to ten thousand pounds, a '64, ported from Poland, um, quite recently, I think. Again, it's not a car I know much about, really. Um, American cars are not my strong suit, but um, it's sort of fun. I mean, you could probably use it like this, take it to shows and things, um, or you could um, have some restoration done on it. It's, I suppose it's a bit of a blank canvas in that way, because it's white as well. Yeah, at the back of here we've got this uh, 55 Land Rover Series 1 estimate 10 to 13 thousand pounds. I think we've seen this a uh, couple of times before. I didn't know that Series 1 Land Rovers were so cheap. This isn't like, the best example or anything, but it's perfectly usable. Door um, seems to be reluctant to sort of shut properly on this. We'll just have another look. We, we've had a look before in this, but um, just the absolute utter simplicity of this. There's just, there's just nothing to these at all. Um, even the Series 3 Lightweight I drove um, a couple of years ago, it was a 79, it wasn't that different from this. Um, there's just something very charming about these old Land Rovers. It's not really, it's not really me. I, I don't really like sitting up top of a fuel tank, for example, when I'm driving one of these. Um, it doesn't make me feel very safe, but, but uh, there we go. Yeah, classic sort of colour for these and um, good old Burma bright and everything. Wonderful. So, lot number 116. I don't think uh, 114 is here. We'll go to 115 in a second, but 116, 1959 Jaguar Mark II. You can see it's quite a bit of work at the moment, probably reattached a fuel door or something. Yeah, it's an uh, early Mark II, this. Estimate 20 to 30,000 pounds. We have seen this before. If you want to recreate that scene from. Um, those old ITC series of 60s where a white Jaguar goes off the cliff. I think it's Derek Newark who drives it. Um, then this is an ideal thing, but you wouldn't want to drive that off the cliff. It's um, worth a lot of money. Another 50s classic here. This is a 1954 Raleigh RME. I always get confused about these, what series they are, because as far as I'm concerned, all the RMs pretty much look the same to me, but um, they are different. This one is going to need a bit of work. It was uh, rediscovered quite, reg quite recently actually. It was used as a wedding car apparently until about 25 years ago. It was rediscovered um, um, in, a, uh, in a barn or something in 2017 and it was in Classic and Sports Art magazine. The estimate on this is only three to four thousand pounds. It has had some work done to it already. There are receipts for it and things like that. Um, I suppose you could you could leave it as it is if you wanted to. The area is actually pretty good. Loads and loads of wood on these old Rileys. Yeah, you could leave it as it is, I'm sure that would be fine. Um, or you could store it, maybe leave it like it is. Um, it's all part of the history of the car. But yeah, there we go. I don't think that's expensive particularly. We'll have to see how that goes. So, a 1987 Toyota MR2 T-Bar. I believe this is an early facelift one for the Mark 1 MR2. So the paint is very flat. Um, you can kind of see on camera. But the estimate on this is only two to three thousand pounds. I didn't think that these MR2s were in sensible second-hand classics territory, but the estimate on this tells me that they still are. It's gonna need some work. Um, and, um, yeah, but you know, because the alloys need polishing up that bit. See if it's open.
Let's have a look. Yeah, interior actually looks pretty good. There's a cigarette burn in one of the seats, but that's okay. I love that 1980s Japanese car smell. It's probably why I have a 1980s Japanese car of my own. Um, hopefully that'll be on the road again at some point soon. But yeah, that's, uh, that's nice. Let's drive one of those. I spoke too soon, viewers. I thought 114 wasn't here. 114 is here, and it's a 2006 Lexus SC430. Um, estimate is six to seven thousand pounds. Not particularly the most loved car when they came out. I remember um, that Top Gear special where. Jeremy Clarkson and James May proclaim this to be one of the worst cars in the world. I, I'm not so sure that they are, to be honest. Um, I can think of many worse cars that I've driven, which aren't as good as this. I wonder if you've got the Mark Levinson sound system in this. To see if there's uh, any more information in this section here. It doesn't say. Mileage on this is 83,000. I don't necessarily know if I'd want one of these myself. I gather they're a little bit soft to drive. It's not particularly me, but um, yeah, somebody might like, like that. Very well equipped. And then we have this um, 2012 ASR Gemini. Estimate six to eight thousand pounds. Little sort of, so 60s inspired um, sports car, not on a cue plate or anything. Got some sort of older um, Controls in there from something like a 1980s car on the steering column. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think necessarily that's sort of me. There's loads of these little things around. Um, but, um, you know, you, could, you can get that one on a nice summer's day would be a lot of fun, I think. Right, next Mini we've got is this 72 Mini 1000, um, lot number 121. Paint on this isn't necessarily the best. It's an early um, Mark III, this. So we've got Cooper-style front brake disc, which is a sensible upgrade. And then um, this Astrali steering wheel. Not heard of Astrali before, but there we go. Otherwise, quite sort of standard looking. The chrome side trims remind me of um, sort of earlier 60s minis. But yeah, estimate five and a half, seven and a half thousand pounds. It's probably on the cheaper end for minis in this sort of condition, I would have thought. Um, I have to ask Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel whether that's any good because he knows far more about these things than I do. So next we've got this 1999 BMW 328i SE individual, very, very late E36, one of the very last. Um, M badges, but it's not an M3. Mm, I like this cream leather interior view. That's um, very fetching. I'd like to see some wood as well, but you know, there we go. Yep, M Tech body kit, including the mirrors. Very sort of 90s colour as well. You can imagine that appearing on the, the Men and Motors channel, can't you? Ooh, look at this view. It's a um, 1985 Ford Granada 2.8 GL State. Estimate on this is only five to seven thousand pounds. It's quite high mileage, 162,000. This car, local plate to the air. It's an old Porsche plate, the PO. Remember that from my youth. Unlike so many of these, this is not a gear, it's a GL. Someone, for some reason, has fitted a steering wheel from a late Mark III Granada. I don't know why. I love these Mark II Granadas. They're some of the best cars Ford ever made. It's quite well equipped, actually. It's got like electric seats and things like that in it, which is amazing, isn't it? It's not even the gear. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's very good, actually. I wonder if they added more equipment to these GLs to sort of get them out the door, because if it's an 85, it'd be one of the very last of the Mark II Granadas. Production did finish that year. The state's continued a little, little bit longer than the uh, saloons. It looks all right. I mean, the mileage is a little bit, a little bit high on it. Um, had a replacement engine, good old 2.8 Cologne V6, one of Ford's better engines, really. Wonderful. Then a 68 Jaguar 340 manual overdrive. One of the last of this Mark II shape, the last of them for, for sure was the uh, Denver V8 250, but the 240 and 340 were sort of 
I suppose slightly cheapened versions of the um, Mark the Mark II 2.4 and 3.4 respectively. Estimate £9,000 to £11,000. It's a bit cheaper than the Mark II outside. Let's have a look on the interior. I think we've got vinyl rather than leather in this one. This has been changed. Yeah, it's still a really nice interior. Look at all those switches in there. So many. It reminds me of an E-Type. This one's got overdrive. Brilliant. You can see, actually, the main difference between these is the, the, the bumpers. It's a nice colour. It looks like it's been in very, very good order, that car, actually. Um, I quite like it, but there are other ones in here that I like even more. And here is one of them. It's a 1995 MGR V8. It's um, on the sort of later side of production, this. 16 to 18,000 pounds. It's basically a, a very, very heavily modified MGB with um, a 3.9 litre V8. And, of course, it's dark green with a beige leather interior and wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. I'm quite fond of these cars, actually. The only problem I have with these is that they've got manual mirrors and manual windows, which I always think is very strange on. was a very expensive car, but, uh, you know, there we go. Um, yes, I sh would like one of those very much. So, for the same kind of money... 15 to 20,000 pounds in this case, you can have this 2007 Lotus Elise R Tour Plus um, in bright yellow. 86,000 miles, one of the new Toyota engine in this one. Got the touring pack on it, and not just 60, and this apparently is about six seconds, which I can well believe. These cars do not weigh very much. There we go, there's the Toyota engine. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. I'm really going to try an Elise at some point in my life. I've never, tr never driven one. Never. Um, getting in and out is a bit difficult. It's probably not the car I would choose to have all the time, but um, that sounds very nice. Hmm, 2004 Maserati Quattroporte. I suspect this car is either from one of these in, in sort of Surrey area or Maserati registered it themselves. I don't know. Supplied by Marinello Legan. There we go. It's probably explained to registration in September 2004. Ah, oh, yes, viewers, look at this interior. Mm, sort of like a biscuit or not even beige leather interior with wood. That's good. I don't know about this gearbox. I, I know Maserati gearbox sometimes do have some problems. And we've got the tiniest gear lever in the world. Fabulous. Well, it's only, um, I don't know, not expensive, five to seven thousand pounds. I mean, you might be buying yourself five to seven thousand pounds worth of troubles when it's like a Maserati, but the design, I think, apart from the front end, I'm still not sure about the front end of these, but the rest of it, I think, looks all right. Um, there's something else I prefer in here to this, but uh, we'll get on to that in a moment. And here it is, viewers, a 1985 Jaguar XJ12 Sovereign. And it's dark green, and it's got a leather interior, and it's got some wood, you probably put the twin fuel tank on this as well. Oh, viewers. Now, this is, this is more like it. Mmm. Very, very tasty. Oh, I can smell the leather. Oh, viewers. I cannot believe this car is only estimated at three to four thousand pounds. It's only got 57,000 miles on the clock. The only problem is with something like this, I think we've got the twin fuel tanks, yeah we have. There's a reason why we've got twin fuel tanks, because the fuel consumption is absolutely appalling. Um, the V12 versions of this Series 3 continue until like 1992. So I suppose for one of these it's still relatively sort of early on, um, in 85, but the XJ40 did come up with the next year. Rear legroom looks quite impressive. This is like a long wheelbase one or something. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the smell of it is just, just wonderful. Um, yeah, my lady wife wouldn't be very impressed if I bought this for you. And also, I wouldn't be very impressed if I couldn't afford to actually put fuel in it. Uh, but that is, um, that is very, very nice indeed. So, next lot, number 132, 1999 Mini Cooper with a sport pack. Um, Morello Cherry, apparently is the name of this colour. Yeah, the, the paint's not the best on this. I mean, these, um, these are actually worth quite a lot of money now. So, uh, there we go. 
The vendor says it's very good in all respects. Well, it's, it's not too bad. I, I think the bodywork can do a bit of tidying up. We'll just leave it, I suppose. Um, look at the interior. Estimate on this is about, I think, eight to nine thousand pounds. It's probably cheaper than some of these were. They were going to Mark Seven sort of steering wheel and indicator stalking things. At this stage, these were just absolute kind of relics, and not, not in a bad way at all. I mean, in fact, you can still buy one of these. Um, 1999, 40 years after it came out, is quite good. It's not particularly my taste for this, but um, one of you will like that. Yeah, I'm more taken with this. I don't know what's this still doing here. This 87. Also, Cavalier 1.8 Cabriolet. I don't, I don't know. None of you seem to have bought this, which is a, it's a shame because I think it's good. Um, Mark II Cavalier convertibles are quite rare. The only thing made for our market in 1.8 form. This is a, a first facelift one. The um, second facelift occurred later on in 1987. It looks, it looks all right actually. This it's only done 50,000 miles or something. Um, it's not cosmetically perfect or anything. You know, the wheels are, could do with a little refurb. But we've got tape storage in here, which is um, something. And, and Mark II Cavalier General are quite nice cars to drive, having tried one of them myself. I quite like that, but again, I don't think I'd be able to get away with bringing that home, even at £1,800, pounds. So, next, a 2003 Aston Martin V12 Vanquish in 007 spec. Reduced reserve, 26 to £30,000. Pounds. So similar to the one used in Dino of a Day, although we do not talk about that film viewers because it's not very good. I like the 007 spec viewers. Um, we can tell the 007 spec because if you open up the door, you can kind of see that it's hand-built in England by David Patterson 007 spec. There we go. Right-hand handbrake like some of the old Russian Martin, the DB7 was the same. Um, yeah, but I hope the gearbox works properly. I mean, these days they've been sort of fixed, haven't they? Um, yeah, gunmetal grey. It's it's nice. It's not quite me, I don't think this, but it looks like fun. So seventy-two Spitfire Mark IV. Estimate three to four thousand pounds. It looks good. I mean, there's some bits that need addressing, like I don't know what's going on with this door down here, for example. But it's not too bad. It's not a lot of money for one of these. You can see the tyres are very new. But if I, for some reason, don't seem to be particularly valuable. Um, and, uh, yeah, it needs a, needs a little bit of work to it. Just notice we've got sort of bits around the sort of bonnet and like that, and bits sort of here on this wing. But the whole bonnet just comes off. Like, you could just I pick up another one if you wanted to. Separate chassis car, these. Yeah, I've never really driven one of these. I, sh I should perhaps have a go at one at some point in my life. I've driven a Herald. I'm hoping that would be, you know, a bit stiffer than that, but I uh, can't guarantee that. A local plate to the air as well, but it's not a Bournemouth plate on there. Oh, viewers, 1992 Saab 900 16 valve turbo. Lot number 137, yeah, that actually is actually correct. As it says on there, five and a half, seven thousand pounds. We've seen this car a few times, and uh, as I think I've said before, it's not quite my ideal specification for a, a 900. It would like, you know, maybe a coupe, maybe in sort of dark green and a beige interior, but it's actually the S model as well, the Turbo S. And you can see we've got these lovely three spoke alloys and, uh, you know, sort of black or grey on black. I think a lot of people who like Saabs are really into that. So I like this very much. I just. Um, would prefer a slightly different specification because I'm a very fussy person. So, a 2003 Mercedes SL500, 88,000 miles, estimate is four to five thousand pounds. Sensible second hand classics money, this car. I mean, there might be a reason why some of it. We've got typical 2000 Mercedes, we've got sort of blistering on the arches, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's, I would dread to think how much these were new. Everything just feels very over-engineered. You've got a bit of wear on that bolster there as well. Yeah, it smells good. I don't know why I'm very sensitive to the smell of cars, but um, that's one of the great things about these older ones is that they do often have a nice smell to them, although that <laughs> Jaguar was even better. 
Yeah, I suppose we'd make a good fun car for somebody. And another old friend here, lot number 139. A 1994 Jaguar XJ12, so the successor to the other one we've seen. Very rare, actually, the 12 cylinder XJ40s. They made them for just, I think, 18 months or something. This one, of course, dark green, beige leather interior with wood and cruise control. The only thing is that, having spoken to a Jaguar expert, Mr. Coleman, road mechanic, who also likes Granadas, is that this one, the suspension just looks like it's been. I don't know, modified or something, and that's not great for these. Um, I would very much like this, but I think I'd prefer to go for the uh, Series 3 version, even if it's not got a base lever interior, and this one has. So, final car of the day, lot number 140, a uh, 2007 BMW 320 SE Cabri Olay with a folding metal roof. Barbara Red, apparently, this is called. And we have a beige leather interior with wood. Unfortunately, I cannot access said beige leather interior, but I do like it. This is the next generation on from the um, uh, E46 earlier. Really. I think it's called the E92, this particular shape. I could be wrong. Um, estimate of this three to five thousand pounds, so sensible second-hand reviews money, not classics yet, um, although this is a car that's over 15 years old, the, that particular shape of the 3 Series were made until about 2012, so we're not quite there yet with these, but um, it's nice, I think, though I prefer the E46 personally. Anyway, it's starting to rain and I need to leave, so thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again next month for some more incorrect information.